about wonks. Hey, everybody, welcome sky. back. All right. Okay, this whole white wolf thing didn't really pan out too well with the die. See how it looks and... be bum -poked, you... you Jacob Heal Mohold down who asks A Witcher saw your notice Hold up a Witcher you say like in Louis Herrera's tales and fables Luckier than a green bleeding leprechaun I am See not a soul around believes this tree is Daphne, the cursed lady of legend. But you, you could lift the curse. Bit too old to believe in bedtime stories, aren't you? Want your chops busted, Witcher? How old I am, that is none of your porking concern. Fair point. Not my business what you believe, either. Ha! Huh. I'm content we see eye to eye. So what makes you think there's a girl cursed inside the tree? Well, I came out with my dog, Moholt, to cut her down. Axe in hand, a broad swing I took. The edge burrowed deep in her trunk, and bum botch me if blood didn't spurt forth. My jaw dropped in the dirt, but right then I knew. Every jot of it in the tail of Daphne Gareth and the Witch of Lynx, Craig. Don't tell me. From Herrera's tales and fables. You porking bet. Second edition. I meant it in Octavo. I know those tales by heart. My nan read them to put me to sleep. Guess she read it cover to cover, colophon included. Got me curious, gotta admit. You really think the old tales are true? Taking the weepy, are you? Do you think me bore me? No, it's just these are dark, grim times. No room for nights pure of heart or happily ever afters. So I don't often run into folk like you. Yes, true, the times are crud pie. But I see this as all the more reason to remember the tales. My gran would say, if you know not what to do, think to the chessboard knight and noble Alondra and the path they would choose. She schooled me so thorough in it, I could not do otherwise even if I wished to. Let me take a look at the tree. Careful now. Swear I hear sobs in the rustling leaves. Actually does bleed. Looks like human blood, too. And the bark resembles hypertrophic scars in places. Medallions humming like crazy. Intense magic at work here. Blood. Seeped from the direction of the tree, judging by the shape of the stain. Logger was making good time. Strange, though. Willows isolated. No other trees near it. And? Did you look at the tree close? Mm-hmm. Actually does bleed. Pretty incredible. Looks wondrous. Did I not say so? My help doesn't come free, you know. You speak to a lowly woodcutter. No stench of coin about me. Agreed. I will pay as soon as the young mate is free. Willing to help, but first I gotta figure out where to start. No need. I know it all. Miss Daphne and Sir Gareth shared a terrible and fearsome laugh for each other. Yet to prove himself worthy of her hint, Gareth was to face the Witch of Lynx Crag, 
Before Sagareth set off for the hill, Miss Daphne gave him her kerchief, a token of her favor. Let me guess, he never returned. He did not. She stood here, day upon day, night upon night, trying to spy him. Till she sprouted roots and turned into a tree? Wonder why. I will fecking tell you why. To await the moment when Gareth returns, Kerchief God in hand. Damn it! That is the power of love. The power of longing. Nobody so is you must here, scale you fucking Craig. Shitbag. Search there for a means to free Daphne. I will give you my book of tales to refer to. And good luck, Witcher. I <sighs> wonder if this is the wisdom test. Something's gotta be the wisdom test. Daphne's Wraith. Oh, it doesn't seem like it's gonna turn out too well now, does it? Close to a level, though. This armor looks fucking stupid as shit. Like, not even funny stupid, just fucking dumb. Mm. Well, don't have any raspberries, so I can't make it pink. Witches. Hut looks inhabited. No sign of the dweller, though. Guess I'll look around. Warm. Smells inconclusive. No idea what ingredients are in there. Bonus. Conclave of mages banned this tome. Bones ground into dust. Notes on the use of yarrow stems. Interesting. Mm. Mm. A 
recall of spell enhancements or trophies. Arrow, broken in half. No doubt to bring bad luck to the archer. Branch off a grapevine. Could be to ensure a good harvest, or a bad one. Doll looks like an accessory for casting curses. Silk kerchief, monogrammed DF. Hmm. Could use it to break the curse if it's Daphne's. None but feral cats stray in here most oft, yet it seems I've a guest from afar at that. What do you seek in my home? Already found it. You do not aim to lift the curse from the tree, girl, do you? What if I do? Then you had best know you waste your time. The old tales? Did your nan not tell them to you? If an I, the witch of Link's Crag would be hard-pressed to overcome the power of love and longing. The Lady's Knight. You ever make it here? Sagarath. Yes. He came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. To be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. He stayed a fair while. Then his conscience got the better of him, and he resolved to return to his beloved. Might have resolved to, but never made it. A tragic fate befell him along the way. You have anything to do with this turn of fate? Of course. Was I to let another woman have a man who belonged to me? <laughs> I could not abide it. What if I asked you nicely to lift the curse, please? Gareth met the fate he deserved. And what happened to his witch was not my fault. All right, so you didn't cast the curse. But could you help lift it? I probably could. But why ever would I? I'll humble myself, prostrate myself before you like the Gareth of the Tale did. I beseech you to help me. Lift the curse that imprisoned Daphne in the tree. When I saw you enter my hut, I thought... Now there is a fellow who shall bend his neck for no one. Stand. None. Not even I can restore to the less the yes she has lost. Can erase the suffering she has endured. We cannot bring her back to life. But I shall tell you how you might let her depart in peace. Yet my aid shall have its price. A lock of your hair. Hmm. How can I know you won't use it to cast a spell on me? I require this. I must, for with it I will cast a spell to conceal me from you for all time, and will use it for nothing else. You will nag me never again, and you've nothing to fear, I assure you. I always keep my word. I'll trust you against my better judgment. Lock of my hair's yours. Splendid. What do I need to do? You must convince the maiden her beloved yearned to return, but perished in the attempt. Take her silk kerchief and a fragment of Gareth's remains. His bones lie bleaching in the cave beneath this rock. Fire must consume the kerchief and remains. And remember, your heart, your intentions must be pure. Clear? Yeah. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. And adieu.
Once you walk out that door, never shall we meet again. At least this is true, I can hold on to I guess he has to be in the cave then. Some bones. Gareth's remains? 
These them. Wonder why the armor came apart. Magic. Gotta get just the tree. Light. Lift the curse. Thinking about it, the Ugh. manner of demon child. Thinking about it, having able, I mean, eh, being able to apply three different oils to your sword, eh, it's kind of because if all the charges wear off at the same time, Which you must have. What did you learn? That witch? She's not near as bad as folks say. Made me bow and scrape, sure. But I know some sorceresses witchier than her. Joyous bleeding news, but what about Daphne? You can't fuck the tree. I can lift the curse, free her. By performing a ritual, making a sacrifice of her kerchief and Gareth's remains. But we gotta start at the right time. When the hour comes, I'll light four fires for the four winds. Then begin the ritual. Fires? Then I shall be of use to you after all. Seems you need wood. Much of it. Chop as much as you can. I'll see to the rest. He's probably thinking, I've hired the Witcher to save you. Give me the sexings. And this is gonna be like, nope. Go I've work. chopped and stacked the wood. What now? My turn. Gotta light fires and talk to the woman enchanted in the tree. No idea how this'll turn out. So just in case, stand at a distance. And if you see me draw my sword, run. Last to the world's four winds. From the south, not a word. From the east, no cry is heard. From the north, silent sighs. From the west, peer hollow eyes. Cease your vigil, dead he lies. Hear me, you who hide beneath this bark. The day of your freedom has come. Behold a kerchief, proof of your love for another. Behold, a bone of he to whom you offered your love. return no he won't is his love for me gone did he stay true well I mean honesty Gareth broke his vow failed to stay faithful man is built of mud and filth milady and is like to blunder we all are. 
How cruel is the world to render conferring one's love so hard? But what would the world be without love? The time comes that I depart. I've waited too long. I've suffered too much. And now I wish to go. Farewell, milady. I thank you, stranger. And you, my knight. I thank you for speaking to me. For standing vigil at my feet. I did not think it would end this way. I hoped we could revive her. But I guess it was not to be. We did all we could. You did well. Here, your pay. And the book is yours as well. Thanks. Take care of yourself. So long, Witcher. I must think, put this straight in my head. Oh. Funny thing, I'm okay, apparently that was... Oh. Never mind. Apparently that was wisdom. Hey, mate. Fetch this oh. empty dead sweep up here. <laughs> Come on. So bad. I cannot hold my job is like a lady. Alright, it's, it's with what is wisdom? Uh, fine, I'll fucking kneel and beg. That 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 that, that seems more like humility. Being humble. I mean, and then telling her no, your your knight was a you know you fucking banged the witch. I mean, that's that's more along the lines of just being honest. Can't really say that's wisdom. You have proven the five chivalric virtues dwell in your heart. Mean the sword's mine? I can dive in and take it? The sword deserves the hand of a master. You must prove your skills are worthy through combat atop the water's surface. Are you ready? Any time. Then draw your blade. This is the man. You will show what you're made of. Fight Moses. You have proven worthy of wielding the blade, beyond all doubt. This is going to turn into a chick, I bet. Behold. Your Arundite. We've met before. Certainly. The hermit admitted he knew you, remember? The Lady of the Lake. It is I. Forget not that you are a man right and honorable, devoted to doing good. And for these reasons you received the blade. Now bear it. And I trust this time you shall not lose it. <laughs> Good job, Geralt. Just wonderful.
So I got the King Arthur sword. Each blow now generates charges, which increase sword damage by 10%. Charges are lost over time or when receiving damage. A fully charged sword always deals critical hit. Killing a foe with a fully loaded sword will expend its charge to permanently increase the weapon's damage. Damage is increased by 0 to a maximum of 10, increasing along with your character level. And it's a silver sword. Which one did I put on? I put replenishment on. So wait, Geralt got the sword from the Lady of the Lake before, and he lost it? Eh, well, he's like 90-some, 90 90-ish, 90 around there, 80, 90 years old, so eh, I guess he could. Geralt, how many times have you fought Diablo? Actually, fuck, how many times has Vesemir fought Diablo? I think Jonas was saying Vesemir is like close to 300. Alright. Okay, here's the question. Can I... The, the question, can I put sockets in it and, the and enchant it? The ugliest man alive revealed himself to be not man, but elf, and an elven sage at that. Avalach, for this was his name. Avalach, for this was his name, was turned into a Yoda. Mmm, fucking sucked it did. No. The world's never ending creation. Wouldn't mind a All right. Can you Aranda? Yes, you can. Okay then. When it max vitality, any vitality regeneration turns into added damage. Well, I do have the constant regeneration. So what is that one? Devana Zoria Peron. Thanks. So long.
It is. What did you? Other than to live. actually, but Yennefer and the Witchers managed to do it. I'm not doing the, the fucking Gwent thing. I'm I'm done with Gwent. Not I'm not but going no. around and, and fucking an hunting down man. 24 fucking Have people to do a tournament. That is beyond padding. Regis. Damn it. Locked. No way I got the place wrong. This is it. Gotta be. Gotta be another way in around here. Show me what you got. There's something here. Need to use the eye. Interesting. Agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliché can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. Could have left the door unlatched. What of my privacy? I value it rather deeply. Unmolested, especially by unwanted guests, that's my preferred state. Besides, I knew you'd find a way to get in. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want or even need must matter little. What matters is what Detlaf wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Mm. 
Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. Abruxa had taken an interest in it. It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. And the ornamentation. It comes from our home. Where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here, guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans and the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I in turn gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. The Hand. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Kovinaris' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Oblitera. There's a copy of Kermorin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Kovinarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it. Just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated. So, without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Kovinaris gave a rather poetic name. Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Dedloff's hideout. Can't you just summon Dedloff? You're both higher vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Ah, uh, there is a being who can summon Detlaf. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being, well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. But of course, because of plot, we're probably going to have to go with that option. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of resonance won't be easy. You guess correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison, to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's my moon glands, but closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. Rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. That thing better not run off.
was that? A raven? Rather a common sight at this latitude. Very intelligent fowl. I asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned. Him and his brethren. Perhaps they'll find one in the area, and I would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would. With all due respect your skills, my friend. It will take them some time, nonetheless. So, perhaps you'd care for a snifter of mandrake. Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? Everyone's got some secret. I agree wholeheartedly. I also believe it wise at times to share one's secrets, unburden oneself to those one can trust. This your sophisticated way of asking me if I trust you? I prefer almost always to ask you directly. It seems a test of intelligence, one you just passed. Hmm. Maybe you should go first. Reveal one of your secrets. After all, you vampires lead very interesting lives. Anything in particular interest you? Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate. Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity is a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible. As my presence proves, but, but I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit. But Triss helped me get it back. Actually, pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living hire vampire's help. However, you just drink that in your nose. The deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. Gotta ask you the big question. One everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlef, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. 
man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Curious what you did after you were reborn. Well, as I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbour's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, a dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back. Defeated the wild hunt together. Ooh. Seems I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough. But it's a conversation we'll have another time. Need to know more about you now. All right. Give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say, but I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? See, so you're determined to get an answer. To find out if I like being a witcher. Just refuse to ask directly, as always. I like being on the path. I like picking up a lead, a trail. I like the tension right before a fight. And nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast. Even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah. Not something I think about much, but I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. Ever vigilant, even in his sleep. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Far as I know, none. Now what you got for me? You were right. No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caroberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. For somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the white survived entirely unmolested. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote, no more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. 
Sorry, Geralt. I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct, and a curse, in one place. That a coincidence, or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... spoons. Spoons? Spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Or perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that white. Uses it in its bruise. Do you imagine the white will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. <laughs> For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought. Uh, but the salivary glands will do fine, indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were gonna make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. Spotted whites. Stay calm and leave them alone. right out towards where this place is. Let's go! I stalk the lard of the Duquesa herself. I wonder if they could give the trial of grasses to a horse. Make a witcher horse. Then you could just give the horse a werewolf decoction. You wouldn't have to worry about stamina. I have no idea what I just rode past. Okay, now Come is on. not the time to get Skyrim stuck on something. Bar guests. Never a good omen. Catch you guys next time. Adios.